870 feet long and weighing more than 44,000 metric tons. A huge project is underway at the heart of the Panama Canal's main system. Right now we are starting to build the infrastructure for the central nervous system of the Panama Canal locks. Imagine ships so massive they make skyscrapers seem small, carrying the weight of entire cities. Meet the Lean, the biggest ship ever built in San Diego. It's generating excitement because it can transport more goods than any ship before it, highlighting the growth of ship sizes and their impact on global trade. This success means billions of extra dollars for the U.S. But there's a problem. Are the ports ready for these massive ships? Join us as we explore biggest container the U.S. has ever seen. The new giants of the ocean. We are beginning to work on building the main parts of the Panama Canal's central system. We have over a thousand miles of electrical cable, 60,000 terminations, all the elements that will allow us to control and monitor the Panama Canal locks. Imagine the locks. They are 870 feet long and weigh more than 44,000 metric tons. That's extremely large. The Lean has been recognized as the biggest container ship ever made in San Diego. There's growing excitement as huge container ships, much larger than we've seen before, are starting to come to the United States. Experts and important people in the field are paying a lot of attention to this. The arrival and the effects of these huge ships have become a popular subject among those involved in sea transport, leading many to reassess and talk about our current seaport capabilities. However, it's not only the size of these new ships that's causing a stir, it's what they mean for America's seaports and infrastructure. How is the United States going to make sure its ports can deal with these massive ships effectively? In this presentation, we will dive into the interesting background of these large vessels and talk about why there is a pressing need to make ports better and more suitable for the modern age of sea trading. Following a recent attack in the Red Sea by the Houthi Group, the United States House Subcommittee on Transportation and Infrastructure came together to talk about what happened and what it means for the future. Although the meeting mainly aimed to talk about safety and political matters, the issue of infrastructure kept coming up as a major point of interest. This is important as it fits with what the committee is supposed to look at, leading to a more detailed discussion on why the state of infrastructure is now a big topic when talking about the Red Sea. For those looking to really understand the movements of ships across the globe, they can look at data specifically about container ships. This information gives a detailed look at the huge number of container ships that travel across the seas worldwide. It's clear that many of these ships start their journeys in Asia and travel a route across the North Pacific Ocean. They are often seen going up towards the north through what is known as the Great Circle Route. Seeing the Earth as a round shape instead of flat helps us better understand how ships move across the ocean. This way of looking at things makes it easier to see the paths that ships take and how they change their routes to avoid bad weather. You can clearly see a lot of ships leaving the Straits of Malacca, heading towards South Africa, or moving along the eastern coastline toward the Indian Ocean. In this busy mix of sea routes, there's a special focus on the really big container ships, those that can carry more than 16,000 containers. By looking closely at these ships, we can learn something interesting. We pay extra attention to the really big ships that start their trips in East Asia. These big ships usually go through the busy port of Singapore, then make their way through the Straits of Malacca to get to the terminal in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Usually these huge ships would take a well-known path through the Gulf of Aden, past the Bab el Mandeb Strait, through the Red Sea, and finally to the Mediterranean Sea. But now, because of the conflict with the Houthi group, there's been a change in their usual route. With their belief in divine support, the naval forces of the Yemeni armed forces carried out two special military operations. They targeted two American ships in the Gulf of Aden, one named the Sea Champion and the other called the Navis Fortuna. Looking at the world this way, as a sphere, not only brings a fresh perspective to how we see the movement of ships, 
but also emphasizes the strategic decisions made by ship captains to ensure safety and efficiency. These decisions involve avoiding areas with bad weather and navigating through regions that provide the best conditions for travel. The high number of ships traveling from the Straits of Malacca towards South Africa or along the eastern coast to the Indian Ocean underlines the importance of these sea lanes for global trade. How has this change in route impacted the Red Sea area? The effect has been quite noticeable. Many large ships have started gathering in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea area. Some of these ships are even trying to go around the blockade near Hodeida. Normally, these big ships would travel around the bottom of Africa to get to busy ports in Algeciras, Spain, or Tangier, Morocco. But now, because of the change in routes, these huge ships are being redirected through the large sea area of the Mediterranean instead. This means they are now heading to well-known ports like Genoa in Italy or Piraeus in Greece, among other places. What's interesting is that these big ships are not seen as much along the coastlines of the United States anymore. This information helps us understand the changes in the shipping routes between Asia and Europe. We are looking at data specifically from three big shipping groups, the 2M Alliance, which includes Marsk and MSC, Mediterranean Shipping Company, and the Ocean Alliance, which is made up of Costco, Evergreen, and CMA CGM. This shift in the shipping lanes has caused a significant redistribution of maritime traffic. It's not just about the new paths these ships are taking, it's also about the effects these changes have on different parts of the world. Now, let's look at how big ships are changing the way the world does business on the sea. How the 2M Alliance changed everything. The size of ships belonging to different shipping groups shows some interesting patterns. For example, the 2M Alliance has ships that can carry between 19,000 and 24,000 20-foot equivalent units on their swan line. Meanwhile, the Ocean Alliance has a bit smaller ships, which usually carry around 12,700 TEUs. This pattern points out how ship sizes are getting bigger, making it possible to transport more goods along these routes. The way container ships have grown over the years tells us a lot about the changes in sea transport. John Paul Rodriguez, an expert in how geography affects transportation, offers valuable insights into this change. He looks at how container shipping started and how it has greatly changed worldwide trade and the logistics sector. If we look back to the 1950s, the first container ships were called Panamax ships because they were made to fit through the Panama Canal's locks. But as we moved into the 1970s, we saw big changes and improvements in these ships. These changes offer a clear view of how sea transport has evolved over time. But let's take a step back to the late 1980s for a moment. That's when we first saw the arrival of post-Panamax vessels. These new, bigger ships couldn't fit through the Panama Canal's original locks. This was a huge step in the world of maritime engineering and shipping logistics. It meant that ports around the world had to make big changes, like making room for larger ships and handling more cargo. As ships got bigger, running a port became more complex. Ports had to come up with new solutions, like having taller cranes to move cargo from ship to shore and making more space to store containers. Also, because these newer ships sit deeper in the water than older ones, they show how advances in maritime technology keep changing the way we move goods around the world. This ongoing change is having a big impact on the global supply chain. The growth of container ships has been more than just a step forward in technology. It has sparked ongoing changes and improvements in ports all over the world. In the early 2000s, the shipping world saw a big change with the arrival of very large container ships, which can carry between 11,000 and 15,000 20-foot equivalent units. These massive ships marked a big step in how we think about and use maritime technology and logistics. Maersk, a leading company in this field, was at the forefront of this shift. They introduced the E-Class ships and later the even larger triple E-Class ships. These huge ships were not just bigger versions of what had come before. They marked a new way of thinking about how ships are made and used. They were incredibly large, at 1,300 feet long and over more than 200 feet tall, setting new records for size. With their design, 
having 22 rows across and stacking containers 10 high above the main deck, these ships could carry a lot more cargo than ever before. This meant that shipping companies could move more goods at once, which made global trade and logistics much more efficient. But the giant size of these ships also brought new challenges, especially when it came to docking and dealing with them in ports. Their huge size meant that they could only fit into certain ports around the world. This required big changes, like installing larger cranes that could reach higher, making more room for storing containers, and improving other port facilities to deal with more cargo. At the same time, around the mid-2000s, Panama started a huge project to update its canal. They added a new set of locks, known as the Panama Canal Expansion Project, to allow these bigger ships to pass through. This was a big deal because it meant that even the largest ships could now move between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans more easily. This project was not just about making the canal bigger. It was about adapting to the changing needs of global maritime transport. These developments have had a huge impact on international shipping and logistics. Ports had to change a lot to handle these giant ships. They needed not only bigger cranes and more space, but also deeper and wider waterways. All these changes took a lot of planning, investment, and engineering work. This big project was all about making the Panama Canal bigger so it could handle larger ships and more traffic. Making the Panama Canal bigger was a huge change for sea travel making it much easier for big ships to go between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Just like the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal also got bigger and better to keep up with the growing needs of the shipping world. By the year 2015, both of these important waterways had been updated significantly. They could now let much larger ships pass through, which changed the way goods move around the world. Because of these bigger canals, a new type of ship called Neopanamax started sailing in 2014. These ships, which are 1,200 feet long, were made to fit through the bigger Panama Canal. This was another big change in how we move things across the oceans. So what's going on with the Panama Canal now? Well, it's a lot easier for huge ships to get through. These big ships can carry more than 12,500 and sometimes up to 15,000 20-foot equivalent units, TEUs. But there's something even more impressive. In the middle of the 2010s, we saw the start of ultra-large container ships, like the massive triple E-class ships from Maersk, which can carry 18,000 containers. And it didn't stop there. The shipping industry started seeing even bigger ships, called Megabox 24s. These giants can carry between 20,000 and 24,000 containers. They are about 1,300 feet long, 200 feet wide, and 53 feet deep. This is a huge deal in the world of shipbuilding and sea travel. These changes mean that ships can now move more goods than ever before, making global trade faster and more efficient. Next, we dive into how Australia is making new ships to meet new challenges on the ocean. The Yemen Vengeful Influence. This year, in our Oceanic Business Division, we took on the challenge of designing an offshore patrol boat for the Royal Australian Navy. The standout feature of our project is that we created a ship that serves three distinct purposes. To handle such large ships, significant changes need to be made to our ports. This includes making the water deeper by dredging, increasing the height of bridges so the ships can pass underneath, and putting in special cranes for loading and unloading. Even though these huge container ships and the enormous Mega-24s can carry lots of cargo, they haven't been seen much in the United States. The main reason is that our port facilities can't support their size and weight. The importance of this situation was highlighted in December when the Houthi group became more prominent. The Houthi started in the 1990s as a small group in northern Yemen, demanding more power and recognition for the Zidi Shia community. Over the years, this movement grew into a larger fight for control, drawing support from different groups and tribes across Yemen. By 2014, the Houthi rebels, together with allies loyal to the former president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, took over the capital city, Sana'a, pushing out President Abdul Mansur Hadi's government. This led to a complicated and ongoing war, drawing in countries from the region and beyond, all concerned about Iran's growing influence in Yemen. Saudi Arabia and its friends started a military operation to help President Hadi's government, 
making the situation worse and causing a lot of suffering for people. The rise of the Houthi group and their control over important parts of Yemen, including places where ships go through, have greatly affected worldwide shipping and trading. Changing the usual paths of container ships to avoid areas of conflict like the Red Sea and the Suez Canal has made established sea transport patterns more complicated and brought new challenges for those running ship transport services. This change is due to the Houthis' involvement in the conflict in Yemen and their control over key sea paths, showing how closely connected world politics and global trade are. This situation underlines the critical importance of having strong plans in place for dealing with risks in sea transport. The problem with ports in the United States, like those in New York, Savannah, and Houston, is they're not ready to handle the newer, larger types of container ships. These ports have a hard time because they're not deep enough and their equipment is too old. There have been some attempts to make the ports deeper to fit the bigger Neopanamax ships, but there's still a lot more work needed to update and make these port facilities bigger. Big shipping companies such as Maersk, Mediterranean Shipping, and Evergreen are pushing for the United States to spend more on improving port facilities. These companies, which are mostly run by people from other countries, know that having ports that work well is crucial for the success of their worldwide shipping business. They argue that to keep up with the bigger ships and increase in global trade, there needs to be more money put into making ports better. These investments are essential for the companies to keep their operations smooth and efficient, ensuring they can meet the demands of international trade. This push for better infrastructure is not just about business. It's about keeping the flow of goods steady and reliable across the globe, which benefits everyone from local consumers to international markets. Maersk, recognized as one of the giants in the container shipping industry, is leading a push for the enhancement of port facilities in the United States. These companies, which connect countries through their vast shipping networks, depend heavily on well-functioning ports to ensure that products can be transported smoothly and efficiently from one country to another. They are well aware that to stay ahead in the cutthroat international shipping game, investing in ports is not just beneficial, but essential. The kind of improvements these shipping magnates are looking at includes making the waterways deeper by dredging, which allows bigger ships to pass through. They also suggest lifting the heights of bridges to give enough space for larger ships to sail under. On top of that, there's a call to bring port terminals up to date to boost their operation speeds and the amount of cargo they can handle at once. But it doesn't stop at the water's edge. There's a significant need to better the roads and railways leading in and out of ports to make sure goods can get to and from the ships as swiftly and efficiently as possible. The push to modernize U.S. ports is about more than just moving goods faster. It's about keeping America in the race in the worldwide market. By putting money into our ports, the U.S. could draw in more international business, leading to more jobs and driving economic growth in cities and regions around the nation that have ports. This means a full-scale, ongoing push is crucial to refurbish and grow U.S. port facilities so they can meet the modern demands of international shipping. Moreover, in their operational techniques, these companies employ what's known as a water shuttle process, where water is shifted between different transport methods and in seeing efficiency. But this system faces hurdles, especially when large tanker ships throw off the usual flow, causing operational snags. It's crucial that the cranes which move cargo from ship to shore are big and strong enough to handle the large number of containers these giant ships bring in. For instance, handling a colossal ship like the Everace demands extensive logistical planning and support due to its vast container capacity. This puts a significant strain on the resources and infrastructure of ports, indicating a pressing need for up-to-date equipment and facilities to manage these challenges effectively. Let's see why we need to fix our ports to keep up with the big changes in shipping. Money Talks, Upgrading Ports for Big Boats. Big shipping businesses like Mediterranean Shipping, Maersk, and Evergreen are saying that the United States needs to spend more money on making ports better. This would help ease the traffic along the busy shipping lanes between Europe and Asia and make it easier to move items around. It's important to understand that fixing this issue isn't just one group's job. Instead, it's a team effort involving the ports, the government, and the shipping companies working together. 
When everyone works well together, they can build and keep up the kind of port facilities that meet the growing demands of the ship transport world. Ships like the Everace and the Maersk E-Class are huge, some of the biggest around. They are longer than 1,300 feet and can carry over 20,000 20-foot equivalent units, TEUs, which is a way of measuring ship capacity based on the size of a standard shipping container. To really tackle the problems at ports in places like the Red Sea, we need to think about how political events, worldwide trading, and changes in sea transport all connect. The conflict with the Houthis in Yemen has messed up the usual sea routes, making big container ships go different ways to avoid dangerous areas. This shift has made it clear that ports need to be flexible and strong to keep up with new challenges in shipping. Dealing with these giant ships is hard. They need special tools and better port setups. Putting money into ports is super important for helping ships travel safely and efficiently on international routes. These companies are trying to make their work smoother, faster, and cheaper. They want to handle cargo better and spend less on fuel. But this focus on making things more efficient has some people worried. They're concerned that a few big companies are getting too powerful in the shipping world. This situation needs balancing so that improving shipping routes and ports benefits everyone, not just the big players. There's a big discussion happening now about how big ships should be, especially when thinking about whether they should avoid usual paths like the Suez Canal and take longer trips around Africa instead. If this happens, we might see even bigger ships designed to carry loads more goods. But this idea brings up many problems, especially in tight spots like the Strait of Malacca, where passing can be tricky. Even though people are talking about this, we probably won't see big changes in how we do things on the sea routes right away. But because of recent problems like wars or natural disasters messing things up, companies are starting to think about how to make getting things from one place to another smoother and less likely to get messed up. These talks aren't just about ships in the sea, they're about all the ways companies get things all over the world, from the start to the end. Companies are looking at different ways to make sure they can keep sending goods, even if something goes wrong. They're thinking about using different ways to move things, keeping the right amount of stock, and using new technology to watch and track what they're sending in real time. The goal is to make supply chains that can handle surprises and still work well without too much trouble. As companies look at these problems and chances, working together with others in their field is really important. This teamwork can lead to new ideas and make sure things keep moving smoothly all over the world. There's also a big talk about making the places where ships come into port better. Even though the ships might be big enough now, making sure the ports work better and can handle containers quickly is something we should do first. This way, everything from loading to sending goods off can be done more efficiently. Back in 2014, the shipping world in the United States saw a big change with the arrival of Neo Panamax ships. These are huge ships, each one longer than three football fields put together, made to go through the bigger Panama Canal. Now, this canal is ready for even bigger boats, some that can carry over 12,500 big metal boxes we call TEUs with the largest ones handling up to 15,000 of these units. But then, we started seeing even bigger ships, like the Triple E-Class by Maersk. These giants can carry around 18,000 TUs. And there are now even bigger ones, called Mega Box 24s, which can hold between 20,000 to 24,000 TUs. This jump in size has made it hard for American ports to keep up because they were not built for ships this big. This problem got more attention when there were issues caused by the Houthi group. The Houthi movement started off in the 1990s as a group in northern Yemen fighting for more rights and power. Over time, this turned into a bigger fight and they ended up controlling important parts of Yemen. This includes places that are crucial for ships traveling around the world. Because of this, ships have had to change their usual paths to stay away from areas with conflicts. This has caused a lot of headaches for people who run ship transport They've had to figure out new ways to move their containers and find different paths to send their ships on. The situation with the Houthis in Yemen and their grip on important sea paths shows just how much world politics and global business are linked together.
It also shows why it's so important for shipping companies to have good plans for dealing with unexpected problems to keep everything moving smoothly across the seas. Now, we'll find out why making our ports better is important for America's place in global business. The ultimate plan, 20,000 container units for giants. Currently, U.S. ports are having difficulty dealing with bigger container ships. Ports like New York, Savannah, and Houston can't handle these huge ships well because they haven't been dug deep enough and their equipment is old. Some ports are being made deeper to fit really big ships called Neopanamax, but we need to spend more money to make these ports better and bigger. Big shipping companies like Maersk, Mediterranean Shipping, Hapag Lloyd, Costco, and Evergreen think it's really important for ports to work well because it helps their business. They want more money spent on making ports better so they can handle bigger ships and more stuff from different countries. We need to spend money on making the water deep enough for big ships, making bridges higher so these ships can fit, and updating the places where ships are loaded and unloaded. Also, we need to make sure that the roads and train tracks connected to the ports are good enough so that moving goods is easy and doesn't get stuck. This will help make sure that big ships can come and go without problems, and that everything from clothes to electronics can get to stores and homes faster. Making the ports in the United States better is very important for moving things around easily and keeping the country competitive with other places around the world. When the U.S. puts money into making ports better, it can bring in more business from other countries, start more jobs, and help the economy grow in cities and areas near the ports. So, there's a big need for a steady and thorough plan to make U.S. ports better and bigger to deal with the new demands from today's global shipping business. This improvement plan should include things like setting up systems where water is used to move containers around efficiently. It's also crucial that the cranes used to move things from the ships to the shore are big enough to handle a lot of containers coming in all at once. It's really important for different groups like the people who run the ports, the government, and the companies that send ships to work together. This teamwork helps make sure that the ports are set up right and can handle what the shipping world needs now and in the future. We're seeing some of the biggest ships ever, like the Ever Ace and the Maersk E-Class. These giants are over 1,300 feet long and can carry more than 20,000 container units each. Handling these massive ships needs special equipment and setups at the ports. This means ports need to have the right tools and space ready, so these huge ships can come and go without any problems. Spending money to make port facilities bigger and better is very important, but it's not the only thing we need to think about. Making sure that the ports we already have work really well and can move containers around easily is just as important. This means making the parts of the port where containers are moved and stored better and more connected. In Europe, they've spent a lot of money on making their ports bigger and better, which has made things work smoother and faster. The ports in Rotterdam and the Netherlands and Hamburg in Germany are good examples. They've made big changes to handle bigger ships and move more goods faster. In the US, the last big update to a port was at the Port of Savannah in Georgia. This project, called the Savannah Harbor Expansion Project, SHEP, started in 2015. They dug out about 130 feet of the Savannah River to make the channel deeper so bigger ships could come in and out. This made the Port of Savannah able to welcome bigger ships, which makes it a stronger competitor and brings in more business. The project in Savannah has really helped the area. More trade means more jobs and more money spent in related businesses. But having just one or a few big ports can lead to problems like too many ships waiting to get in. That's why it's a good idea to have a bunch of ports that work together well. This network of ports would help spread out the work and keep any one port from getting too crowded. Making ports better in different places helps keep the flow of goods around the world strong and reliable. This is important because as ships that carry containers get bigger and bigger, we need to keep updating our ports to handle them. This updating includes adding new tech to make things run smoother. For example, using robots to move containers around, using smart computer programs to decide where to put containers, and having systems that can track containers all the time can make things faster and cut down on mistakes. Using digital tech helps different parts of shipping, 
like ports, shipping companies, and customs, share information easily. This makes everything from loading ships to moving goods through customs faster and less likely to get held up. Using ways to work that are good for the environment, like building things in ways that don't harm nature and using clean energy, also means ports can work well without hurting the planet. Linking ports well to other ways of moving goods, like trains and trucks, means containers can get from ships to stores or houses without problems. But all these improvements cost a lot of money. This means different groups, like businesses and governments, need to work together and put in money to make these changes happen. By putting money and effort into making ports better, countries can help make sure that goods from different parts of the world can move around easily. This helps keep prices down, makes economies strong, and ensures that we can all get what we need when we need it. Was the arrival of ultra-large container vessels to the U.S. a simple evolution of trade, or did it reveal a critical unpreparedness in our infrastructure? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more revelations.